suppose you're asked to approximate a trigonometric function. For example, let's say I had the sine of 32 degrees. We know sine of 30 degrees, which is one half, but we don't really know the sine of 32 degrees. So to find an approximate value, we're going to use our calculator. Scientific or graphing, either one. So let me pull out my scientific calculator here. First thing you always need to do is make sure your mode is correct. So since this is 32 degrees, I'm going to make sure that my mode is in degrees. If you have a graphing calculator, same idea. I'm going to make sure that my mode is in degrees. Just to make sure you have the right mode, so I'm going to change it into degrees. Okay, so then at this point I'll do sine of 32 degrees. So just look for SIN. And then 32, it knows it's degrees. So then when I hit enter, there's our approximation. So about 0.5299. And let's try one with radians. Let's say I want the cosine of pi over 8. So since I have radians, I need to change my mode again. So this time I'll make sure I have radians. Okay, so then look for cosine. And then your pi symbol is somewhere. So in my case, it's right near the top. So pi divided by 8 is about 0.9239. One more. Let's say if we want to find the cotangent of 10 degrees. Be really careful here. On your calculator, if you look above tangent, it says tangent to the minus 1. This minus 1 is not reciprocal. This minus 1 is inverse. We'll cover that in uh, later sections. So if I want to find the cotangent, I need to do the reciprocal of tangent. So on my calculator, I got do not hit second tangent, that's inverse. So I'm just going to do 1 divided by, and then mode needs to go back into degrees. And so that's about 5.6713.